No Jumping on the Bed by Ted Arnold. In his bedroom near the top floor of a tall apartment building, Walter was getting ready for bed. Before turning out the light, his father said, If I told you once, I've told you a million times, no jumping on the bed. One day, it'll crash right through the roof. Now lie down and go to sleep. Just one more time, asked Walter. But instead, he plopped down on his pillow and squeezed his eyes closed. Good night, said his father. He turned off his light and pulled the door almost closed. The room was dark and quiet, except for a soft thump, thump, thump coming from the room above. That's Delbert upstairs, thought Walter. He switched on his bedside lamp. If Delbert can jump on his bed, so can I. Walter bounced higher and higher. On his last jump, his hair brushed the ceiling. But when he came back down, his mattress creaked, the floor cracked, and the whole bed tipped sideways. Then down through the floor fell Walter, bed and all. Now it happened that Walter's bedroom was directly above Miss Hattie's dining room. She was more than a little surprised when a bed fell through her ceiling and Walter landed in her plate of spaghetti and meatballs. I was not expecting company for dinner, she mumbled with a mouthful of meatballs. Mmm, said Walter. Spaghetti is my all-time favorite. But before he could eat, his bed smashed through the table and kept right on crashing through the floor. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, the plate of spaghetti, the bed, and all. Miss Hattie's dining room was above Mr. Maddie's TV room. Mr. Maddie didn't even notice a bed falling through his ceiling until a meatball bounced off his head. Miss Hattie tumbled into his lap and Walter splashed into his aquarium. I've already had my bath tonight, said Walter. He wanted to stay and watch the monsters on TV, but his bed crunched through the floor, taking the TV with it. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Walter's Aunt Batty had just moved into the building. She was just unpacking when Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, and a dripping wet Walter tumbled through the ceiling right into a box containing her rare Patagonian stamp collection. When he burst through the bottom of the box, Walter was a sticky mess. I see you started collecting stamps said Aunt Batty as she followed Walter through the new hole in his floor. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, Aunt Batty, the stamp collection, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Patty and Natty had worked three days building their dream house with blocks. Afraid that Fatty Cat might knock something over, they carefully shooed her out for the night. Then the upstairs neighbors came through the ceiling. Excuse us, said Walter, remembering his manners. We won't be staying long. The words were barely past his lips when Walter's bed bashed through the floor and continued on its way. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, Aunt Batty, Patty Natty, Fatty Catty, the stamps, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. The last thing Mr. Hanratty ever expected to see was a bed coming through his studio ceiling, followed by nearly everyone in the building. If I had known you wanted to see my paintings, he said, I would have tidied up a bit before, but before ne but they never once paused to admire Mr. Hanratty's colorful artwork. They were too busy splashing in his cans of paint. Then the floor caved in and everyone followed Walter's bed down through the hole. Down and down fell Walter, Miss Hattie, Mr. Maddie, Aunt Batty, Patty, and Natty, Mr. Hanratty, Fatty Catty. Seventeen cans of paint, the stamps, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Mastro Ferlinghetti and his string quartet were astonished by the colorful crowd that fell from the ceiling. The Mastro loved an audience, even if they dropped in unannounced. But when Walter's bed smashed through the floor and paint splattered everywhere, the Mastro wished his audience would leave, and so they did, along with his string quartet. 
Mastro Ferlinghetti's practice room floor was also the basement ceiling. It was dark and quiet at midnight down there. Walter squeezed his eyes closed and tumbled through the darkness until he landed on something soft. He opened his eyes. Everything was in its place. His bedroom lights were out. The door was almost closed, and through it, Walter could hear his mother and father talking quietly. No more jumping on the bed for me, mumbled Walter as he lay back down to sleep. Suddenly, he heard a creak. The ceiling cracked, and down came Delbert, bed and all. Down and down fell Delbert.